Hello and welcome to A Little Crafting. My name is Annie and I'm recording this from Surrey in the UK, which is where I live. Um, this is my bi-weekly podcast, although I've had a little bit more of a break this week, which I'll talk about later. And I talk generally about knitting, weaving, sewing, and anything else that I've been doing in terms of crafting, also some yarn dyeing sometimes, um, whatever takes my fancy for that episode. Um, you can find me on Instagram as a underscore little underscore crafting and on Ravelry as AnkiWoo. And today is the 26th of September 2021. So I had a bit of a break last week. I was actually away for the weekend with some family. Um, we went to stay in the Southern Cotswolds uh, near Bath for a few days, um, just to get away from the house as my husband and I have been working from home for so long so during the pandemic. It felt nice to kind of get away and be somewhere else, even if that wasn't that far away from where we live. Um, so we had a lovely time over there. Unfortunately, I didn't get to go to any yarn stores because we were with family. I felt a bit guilty about visiting a yarn story or um, the bath wool shop um, during that time. So I don't have any acquisitions from that period, but I do have some others that I'll show later on anyway. And so yeah, overall I had a lovely time, but I am back. So I'm recording a podcast this weekend um, and I'll try and kind of keep on schedule going forward. So let's start with what I am wearing and I'll um, give you a bit of a close up of this. Um, so as it's quite a warm day, I didn't want to put a jumper on. <laughs> it's nice and sunny here in Surrey this weekend. So, um, so I thought I'd just put a t-shirt on and then stick a cowl over the top um, but it gives me a good opportunity to show you sort of the the things that I've got lined up to wear during winter with a coat or um, you know to keep me warm over that kind of winter period um, and this one is the snowdrift cowlet by um, Mina Phillip who is also a knitting expert and has her own podcasts in fact that was one of the first podcasts I started watching when I first um, was made aware of knitting podcasts uh, several years ago um, and this is a lovely cowl pattern uh, let me stand up a little bit so it's got this lovely texture detail around here it's got a wonderful kind of pointed um, look but it sort of curves round um, and it's yeah all done up at the back like a cowl should be um, but I think it just is a really perfect sort of winter staple because if you've got a v-neck coat or something like that or something that comes down like this then you can wear it underneath that to keep your neck and kind of the upper part of your chest warm whereas just wearing a scarf you know you might have this section exposed um so this is a great uh winter staple and it's really pretty and was a really lovely knit and it knit it a couple of years ago and to be honest i haven't worn it that much yet um I'll sit back down again and um, explain the yarn I use. So I think three, two or three years ago, um, I bought this yarn from Unravel in Farnham, which is the annual yarn festival there. Um, and this is Die Die Done Yakalicious. I am not sure what the colourway is, um, but the Yakalicious base is a yak silk and merino blend which means it's really luxurious but also really warm so it's so soft and kind of it's got a bit of a shine to it um, because of the silk so it's really lovely as a yarn base and to be honest I would love to buy some more dye dye done yarn especially in this base because it is absolutely beautiful and the colours are stunning um, unfortunately I think they're in Poland if I remember correctly um, so it's a little bit more tricky for us to get that yarn across in the UK unless they come over for a festival and they haven't been at the last couple of unravels and um, so it's a shame I've missed out on buying their yarn but perhaps in the future I'll have an opportunity um, but highly recommend it if you're able to get any dye dye done yarn just again colours are stunning and would definitely buy their yarn again having having knit this in some of their Yakalicious base. Continuing to more knitting, um, I will talk about some finished objects that I've got this week. 
and unfortunately there's only one and it's quite a small one again having family over sort of distracted me from my knitting time even though I thought going away and being somewhere else would give me more time to sit and knit that didn't turn out to be the case because it was lovely weather so we spent a lot of time outside doing things so I only have one FA this week and that is this little baby hat and this is the same one kind of pattern that I used in my previous episode for the purple hats it is the baby beloved by um solen i think <laughs> again struggling to pronounce that name um but it is in debbie blish cash merino aaron in this time the coral colorway um and this is just a staple hat pattern that i use for babies it has a really lovely seed stitch texture double seed stitch um, and a really great shape um, this yarn is also fantastic because it does stretch quite a bit so this hat will fit a baby for a fairly long time um, one of my friends babies I knit this hat for him and he was wearing it when he was one and a half even though this is the the baby size <laughs> um, so you know sort of three to six months I think is is the quoted pattern size this is a fantastic pattern and it's free um, it was paired with uh, Dorera Natura Gilliat um, as a pattern so Aran weight yarn or, or worsted weight yarn um, depending on you know what you want to use and um, yeah just a really great simple pattern that looks fantastic my mum actually really likes the way that these hats are turning out um, so we'll be knitting her own hats <laughs> for charity in this pattern because she really likes it so I'm gonna have to teach her um, how to do these stitches as needed um, but yeah really great pattern highly recommend it um, and I will I am part way through a second one of these almost finished so I'm just about to start the decreases I thought it wasn't really worth me showing you that in my whips considering I have a finished one here so um, just to say there will be a second one too um, and this is going to be for a friend's baby in November um, I do love that colour as well um, and the Cashmerino Aran is fantastic as baby yarn because it's washable but it's really soft and it contains wool and cashmere and and acrylic as well all together um, so yeah that is my finished object for the week so moving on to works in progress um, like I said I haven't had a huge amount of time to do some knitting but I've made some progress on some projects that I already had um, the first one is my Spring Sorrel uh, by Will and Pine, which I am keeping in this lovely antler and acorn bag with my lion, <laughs> which I absolutely love and got from my husband for Christmas last year. Um, it's a great jumper knitting bag because it fits kind of the perfect amount of yarn for a sweater. Um, a lot of the bags, the other bags that I have are a bit small, so might be okay for a lightweight sweater or a, or a crop top, but not a full sweater. Um, so let me show you where I am, and apologies for the noise. <laughs> so I think last time I had finished off the yoke, um, which is in this lovely uh, River Knits D uh, BFL DK in the Salisbury's colourway. Um, I had to stop because I ran out of that yarn um, and luckily it finally arrived. I was a bit worried that it had got lost in the post, um, but it did end up turning up. I did contact Rivernitz just to check that it was definitely on its way and then found out that they had a tracking number for it. So I was able to get it re-delivered by the post office. Thank God, I was so worried about the yarn more than losing the money. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I have been able to continue with this and I am just absolutely raring to go on this project really hoping to get it done soon um, so what I have done is split for the sleeves and actually completed the sleeves um, so let me give you a bit of a close-up I'm fading this from the Salisbury's colorway in the BFL DK um, into a castaway DK in Industrial Kingfisher which is a yarn by Stranded Dye Works Amy um, this is an older base, she no longer does this castaway DK, um, I think she just has DK Merino now which has a higher twist 
and um, this is quite a loose and splitty yarn I would say in general um, but I got this again at Unravel when she was there a few years ago and I wanted to use it with the Salisbury's colourway because it kind of blends quite nicely together um, so give you a close up of the sleeve um, it looks a bit odd when it's not on I would say uh, so let me focus so it is a twisted rib um, in terms of the long rib there and um, you literally do a few rows of the pearl stitch um, and then you change into the twisted rib and you do about two inches um, so you've got this really long rib but it does look really good on the reason it looks a bit odd I think is because you do use Jenny's super stretchy bind off so it kind of flares out when you've just got it sitting like this um, but when it's on it kind of stretches out and looks very nice and lovely on um so yeah i'm really liking the way that this is fading i i'm not 100 percent sure whether i like the look of the sleeves with the fact that you've got most of it in a kind of variegated yarn and then a really tiny bit in the salisbury's color um but i'm gonna continue and see how it turns out at the end um so i've done both sleeves there you go um, and now I am on the body. So what I've done is knit a few rows um, and then I'm now decreasing according to the pattern. So I'm about kind of just below the bust at this point. So I need some decreases to kind of move down to the kind of waist area. Um, it is rolling up a bit, so it's a little bit hard to show you, but I might show you upside down um, so that I can hold this flat. Um, yeah, so I've done a few rows of that section and now decreasing, but doesn't this look beautiful? Um, it looks even better on, I have to say. <laughs> so I have tried it to make sure it fits and it fits perfectly. Um, the rolling is a bit annoying when you're trying to try it on, um, but obviously it's because it's reverse stockinette. So the stockinette rolls inwards <laughs> because that's on the inside. Um, yeah, but... I think I said before I absolutely love this stitch um, and I will definitely be knitting a full-on um, sorrel sweater at some point because I do have the pattern and also because I love this stitch so much and I think it looks beautiful as a kind of radiating yoke effect. Um, yeah so that is where I am at the moment. Um, I will need to remember to give myself enough of the Castaway DK Industrial Kingfisher um, to make sure that I can fade into the next colour, which I am debating, so I'd love your opinion on it. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to go with the grey next, just because there are sections of grey within the Industrial Kingfisher colourway. Um, so I think that will go quite nicely as the last colour. But I also have the option of using... Um, the Madeleine Tosh DK Twist Paper colourway, which is a really kind of beige, light, um, off-white colour. Um, again, which might work, but it might be a little bit too light. Um, so I'm thinking that the fading will be better with the grey because it will look a bit more subtle. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think, grey or white. That would be great. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm progressing well and I'll probably do quite a lot by next week to be honest when I record next um, so I hope to have an almost finished top by then um, especially because we have a knit along going on on my Ravel group which is for summer tops um, and the pattern that you will win um, I'll be choosing a random winner from the finished objects thread is the spring sorrel um, top I've seen a lot of people have actually knit the Anchor's Summer shirt, which I also knit this year. Um, so really cool to see other people's versions and how it looks in different yarns and different colours. Um, that knit along ends on the 30th of September, so there's not long left, just a few days. Um, but please do post in your finished object in the finished objects thread um, if you've finished a summer top this year. Um, for a chance to win this lovely pattern that I'm going to keep saying good things about. <laughs> Next up, I have also been making some progress on my star blanket blanket. Oh, so this is a pattern by Stephen West and it is a massive kind of circular star shape blanket. 
um, I am knitting it in Willow and Lark DK in a few different colours, uh, but that's what it looks like. It's the Ramble um, base, which is a DK base. Uh, it is made of, ooh, it just says 100% wool. Um, it's super wash though, I believe. Um, and I've got several different colours, so four colours. Um, I have an orange colour, a grey colour, a, an off-white and a kind of tealy but not quite teal blue um, so this is to match the colours of my lounge I have a couple of throw cushions that have these colours um, and I wanted something to match so the idea is that the blanket will end up on the back of my sofa um, so that when my husband and I get cold we can just throw it over our legs in the winter and be nice and cosy um, I also think it's a really great statement piece, like a pe almost a piece of art, because it looks fantastic when it's done. Um, so I'm hoping to get that done soon, but I've got a long, long way to go. Um, so I'll show you where I am at the moment, and to be honest, you might not even notice that I've got much further than last time. Um, but basically I've finished, so I've got the centre one, which I'll show you if you haven't watched the previous episode just so that you can see. So the centre section is this big eight point star. Let's see, can you see that? Kind of. <laughs> so it's the big eight point star in the middle which I've done in grey and orange and then there's these ridges around the star. So um, I'm alternating the kind of bluey teal colour and the off-white um, which I think makes a really cool effect. Um, there's a section of Knit stitch, knit stitch rows, so just stockinette, and then there's garter bands in between in the white. Um, and this all follows around the edge of the centre star, um, so it does look really cool. Really difficult to show you the full thing, um, I get the feeling it seem, it's probably bigger than it seems <laughs> at the moment, um, but I think you get the idea. So I've done two of the white ridges plus three of the blue bands, and there's two more white ridges and well, sorry, three more white ridges, I think also three more white, three more blue, no, maybe two more blue bands to go um, in this section. And after that I've got a brioche section. So I have 560 plus stitches on the needles at the moment and um, it takes so long. So that's why, I, to be honest, I'm going to have to say I'm probably not going to make a huge amount of progress each time I record on this one. Um, but it is still fun, I'm just picking it up every so often, doing a couple of rows, then putting it back down again because it does take a long time. You know, I'll probably be sitting there for an hour doing two rows. Um, so yeah, so not much satisfaction from this knit, but I expect it will be amazing when it's finished. Um, I will just pop a link to the pattern down below so that you can see what it looks like. Um, because it, this doesn't really show off as much as I would like at the moment but one day I will have a finished object one day maybe in a couple of years depending on how fast I do this um, and I'll be able to show you the whole thing in it, all its glory um, so yeah that's where I am with that the yarn is a DK yarn um, so yeah so not too fine or anything like that um, but I do just love the uniqueness of this pattern. It's, you know, there's so many blankets that are just square or, you know, rectangular and you think, okay, that's fine. And I struggled to decide which blanket I wanted to make um, when I decided to do a blanket project. Then Stephen West released this and I went, yes, straight away. Not really thinking through the fact that you have so many stitches on the needles by the end. Um, I'm going to need to get some more higher, higher, sharp, or higher higher needle attachments um, which I'll show you one of if I can actually uh, so basically there is a kind of needle um, wire connector that you can get I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that let's see if it can focus in there you go so you connect two of your cables for your circular needles together to make them bigger. I am probably going to need a couple more of those before I finish this project because I'm already quite tight on here. Like you know, it's clumped up in a, in most places. 
Um, so I don't know how big it's gonna end up. I should probably, you know what I should do? I should look at the measurements of the entire thing and work out how much goes around and then see if I can get a few long ne needle cables and then um, some connectors <laughs> to make up that whole size because I'm gonna need that at some point and I don't think I have enough long cable cables for my interchangeable needles to join them all up to make that size with the I think two or four connectors that I've got and I'm using connectors on other projects as well so bit of an investment this one in both time and <laughs> other things um but super happy to be knitting a project that I really care about and that is going to be a lovely piece when I've finished. So those are my only whips at the moment in terms of having made progress from last time. Um, like I said I did start and um, knit a bit of a baby hat but not really worth showing at this point. Um, so let's move on to my acquisitions. The first one is from Rivernets, or the first two are from Rivernets, and like I said, I had to order an emergency skein of the Salisbury's colourway of the BFLDK um, to be able to continue with my Spring Sorrel top. Um, so I also had to buy a couple of things to make up for the fact that I was ordering one skein. Obviously you can't just buy one skein, can you? I mean, you're paying postage, might as well get a couple more things. <laughs> Um, so what I got was a couple of other um, DK yarns just because I'm I, to be honest I think DK is my favorite as a base because it's versatile you can use it for hats you can use it for bigger projects most of the sweaters that I make are either in DK or Aran weight um, and just that means that there's not as much of a problem for me kind of buying DK yarn because I'll tend to use it for a kind of all sorts of things so accessories or hats or anything like that um so I could always find a use for them whereas fingering weight I find I've ended up with so much of it and it takes a while to use a skein of 100 grams of fingering weight and I think I forget that sometimes um it goes quite a long way <laughs> so DK it is <laughs> and what I have bought is um so again the BFL DK base um, this one is called shroom and it's a lovely set of autumnal colors let's see if that works there you go lovely autumnal colors it's got kind of some burnt orange which is one of my favorite colors some turquoise some uh, quite a lot of green um, and just kind of bright pops every so often a little bit of kind of brownie purple there I think um so yeah really lovely skein of DK and to go with it I also bought <laughs> a burnt orange colour <laughs> how predictable am I um and this is rost um in the same base and just goes really nicely together with that one very very happy with those two I don't know what I'm going to use them for yet but I'm sure I will find some way of using these for something lovely together. Um, it might end up being a cowl, it might end up being a shawl, I'm not sure. Um, but definitely happy to have some more of this lovely BFL yarn. Next up is some yarn that I have wanted to get and try for a while. And that is from the Fibre Company. Um, and it is called Law. Um, so this yarn, oh, sorry for the crinkling. Um, is absolutely beautiful so this is kind of quite a dark green but it's got all sorts of different colors in it um it is so it's 100 grams per skein um it is 100 wool um and it's a, actually 100 kent lambs wool i've seen other podcasters use this um including i think it's alex I can't remember her name. I will link to the in the description box below when I remind myself of her podcast. Um, and 
I've heard that this softens up so nicely. So I've wanted to buy some of this yarn all year, um, but I really needed kind of a good opportunity to buy it. And um, I ended up ordering it from Tangled Yarn because they had a bit of a sale on. Um, it is quite pricey, I think, um, overall, especially for a sweater's quantity. So I bought a number of skeins of this. And I'll zoom in, there you go. Um, and this is going to be for the Brandle Howe sweater. And this is a pattern um, by Natya Hornby. And it is actually designed to be knit in this yarn. Um, I was originally going to knit a cabled cardigan with this yarn. But I've decided that I actually want more sweaters. Um, so I've planned to knit a sweater instead and it's a really lovely pattern with a kind of v section at the front with some cables and then it's quite simple the rest of the way down um so i wanted something green because i don't have that much green um in my wardrobe and i think it's a really beautiful kind of textured yarn in this lovely dark green color probably goes with my eyes as well which are also green <laughs> So yeah, I've got a whole load of skeins of this that I'm excited to cast on, but I do have a lot of other projects to do um, and finish before I get onto that. Um, but yeah, so really excited to try this yarn, to be honest. Um, and yeah, the shade is ambitious, so very dark green colour. Um, yeah, so looking forward to that. Along with that from um, the Tangled Yarn website, I also ordered something which I get every single time they release an edition and that is the Lane Magazine issue 12. So that is this one here. Um, and I do love having a collection of these, um, but I do also need to knit some patterns from the earlier ones. So I have every single one to have 12 issues. Um, they are quite expensive for what you would consider a magazine, but to be honest, I consider this to be a book because it has so much in it. It has loads of patterns, it has articles, it has recipes, and it's just beautiful. It's, you know, to me, it's not like a magazine like The Knitter where it's kind of the sort of thing you'd get on a supermarket shelf, just, or, or like a news agents. This is something special, you know, it's thick. It's um, it's a specialist magazine. There's a lot of care that goes into the photography. Not that there isn't any care that goes into the other photography, but you know, it's a kind of a higher level of publication. So I would personally call it a book rather than a magazine. Um, and I've had a look through at all the patterns and as usual, they are all beautiful. But I think the one that caught my eye is this one, which is Viburna. Um, which is a really nice loose sweater, but I love the texture on it. I don't know if I can zoom in enough so that you can see that. Um, there you go. So I think that's one that I'm going to be knitting. And then the other one that I saw is the Honey Glow, which is a pattern by Tammy Gore. And it's this beautiful textured shawl. Um, just so pretty and I think I'm also drawn to it because of the colour of the sample to be honest um kind of goes quite well with my aesthetic in general um so yeah those two are kind of one patterns that I have my eye on for this but what I'm probably going to do after I finished recording today is go and sit in the sunshine and read some of the articles in this um because it's just lovely as a relaxing thing to do. There's also some amazing recipes. I'll try and show you the picture without showing you details. Yeah, looks fantastic that. It is a plum galette. So considering I have been very excited to have plums growing in my garden, um, I will probably try and make something like this next year when we have the plums again. Um, just, you know, plums in the garden, handmade or baked recipe. And yeah, that will be lovely. So yeah, that was my other acquisition. 
I have not really been doing much else over the last couple of weeks. Um, I've done a bit of sewing on the quilt, um, but not enough really to show you. So I've just, what I've done is joined kind of the squares together. Um, I will probably have some more to show you next week because I am planning on making some time to finish off at least the top and then hopefully the next step, which is gonna be adding the backing and also the kind of internal, um, I was gonna call it insulation, but it's not called that. Um, <laughs> but you know what I mean, the internal filling of the quilt. Um, hopefully that won't be too tricky. But I need a lot of space now because it's quite big. So my cutting mat is smaller than the size of the lengths of <laughs> fabric that I've got. Um, so I'm trying to work out how I best sew it together and make sure that it's all lined up um, with something that big. If you have any tips for that, give me a shout and let me know in the comments below. Um, and yeah, I'll be very happy to hear from you. Um, so that is everything for this week. Um, thank you so much for watching to the end and please do like and subscribe if you are enjoying the content that I'm producing. Um, I will be back next week for an episode uh, just because I skipped one week and um, hopefully I'll have a lot more content for you to show and be able to crack on with some knitting in the uh, yeah, next few days. Um, again, thank you so much for watching and have a lovely week. Bye.